Hello everyone, in this video I'll be discussing <coughs> Carl Pearson's coefficient of correlation and uh, let's uh, have a particular insight on what Carl Pearson coefficient of correlation is all about and uh, then we will uh, discuss about uh, a simple problem. I'll try to take up a very simple problem. So in this particular uh, first slide I'm trying to explain that what Carl Pearson coefficient of correlation is about. So, uh, Carl Pearson has given uh, uh, correlation, you know, a coefficient of correlation. What is Carl Pearson's coefficient of correlation? First of all, it doesn't establish a relationship. The relationship amongst the variable must be established logically. Probably you can think of an example of uh, amount of rainfall and the production of wheat is depending on it or uh, you can think of another examples like uh, more CO2 emission uh, can cause higher uh, levels of pollution. So the variables must be uh, logically correlated while uh, this particular coefficient of correlation is going to measure the strength or degree of correlation and it will also determine the direction of the movement of variables in uh, togetherness. What do I mean by it? You logically establish a relationship, you logically look into the relationship of the variables, step one. Then comes Carl Pearson's coefficient of correlation, which is going to tell you that up to what degree, what is exactly the strength lies in this particular relationship which you have logically established. So uh, in this particular video, I'm not describing uh, the details of correlation, what are the different types of correlation and all that. I'll be coming up with a different video on it. Right now, I'm going to focus on one coefficient of correlation, which we'll be calculating. So uh, Carl Pearson's coefficient of correlation before calculating, there are certain assumptions which Carl Pearson has assumed that data should be normally distributed. If you are in primary stages of statistics, you are probably in high school or uh, just, uh, you know, beginner in, uh, so you don't have to bother about it much. Uh, in this video, I'm just learning the technique to calculate the Carl Pearson coefficient of correlation. But in advanced stages, when you are doing research and all that, you should actually check the normality of the data, whether the data is normally distributed or not. We'll come to those particular stages in times to come. Then the second is homoscedicity. That simply means, uh, okay, I'm going to explain it through a graph. That means whenever you are drawing a best fit line or best line that is representing a uh, relationship of two variables, then the variance on both sides of the line should be same. That I'll be explaining through a graph a little bit. Then there must the relationship must be linear in form. Then uh, the variable under study must be continuous in nature. Then uh, there must be sufficient number of paired observations. That means if I'm talking about two different variables, like I have given the example of uh, amount uh, production of wheat depends on amount of rainfall then perhaps I have yearly amount of rainfall and uh, yearly production of wheat and there must be data must exist in pairs that means uh, perhaps I'm collecting the data from year 2000 so in 2000 I must have one pair that means amount of rainfall in 2000 and production of wheat in 2000 then in 2001 again I should have a pair of values that means amount of rainfall for 2001 and uh, then the production of wheat in 2000 funds and note outliers that, mean, that means there must be no irregularity in the data that means if you are having a uh, 20 years data on the same example which I've just given there must not be any year between where uh, the rainfall didn't take place at all you know there is a drought or something like that or uh, there is an excessive production of wheat so these kind of outliers must not be there uh, one more thing that number of pair observations are supposed to be sufficient in numbers. That means there must be a large number of observations. Well, by large, I do not mean that you have 100, 200, but sufficiency must be there. Okay. And uh, so in order to how to test these assumptions in primary stages, I'm talking about, I'm not talking about very advanced stages right here. I'm just giving you a idea. Always create a scatter plot of the data. Once you create the scatter plot, more or less all of them can be tested and I'll show you how to create a scatter plot in computer you know on an MS Excel you can do it in a single click I will also post the video that how to calculate this thing on MS Excel and how does it actually go how it uh, how you could actually go through skim through all the assumptions all six assumptions and on the right hand side we have the 
formula given by the legend. That means small r is representing the Carl Pearson's coefficient of correlation is equal to sum of small x times small y divided by square root of sum of small x square times sum of small y square. What does sum of a small x means here? It is capital X minus x bar and small y means capital Y minus y, y, y bar. That means there are two variables in this particular uh, formula, uh, two uh, different series of variables. One is given by capital X, another is given by capital Y. Typically, this capital Y is considered as dependent variable on X. So when I talk about the example of amount of uh, wheat production of wheat depends on amount of rainfall then production of wheat is will be represented by capital Y it becomes dependent on capital X amount of rainfall so X capital X will be representing amount of rainfall capital Y will be representing amount of uh, you know sorry production of wheat so uh, you can pause the video you can see all these things that what what do I mean by all of them let's let's solve an example now Okay, right now here I have the data set with me. I have two variables listed, capital X and capital Y. Capital X marks in finance, capital Y marks in statistics. And I'm assuming here that anybody who does good in finance must be doing in a test of statistics. So I am for this example is considering capital Y as a dependent variable on X. That means if somebody is doing a good in finance it involves a lot of technicalities calculation of ratios and all that must be doing good in stats also <clears throat> or you can think it other way around you can think like y as uh, marks in statistics or you know, marks in finance and x as marks in stats that makes more sense probably now there are one two three four five there were five students whose marks are taken so what is the first pair of data it says so look at that assumption five paired observations paired observations so I'm having data in pairs first student scores six in finance and nine in stats second students again the data is in pair scores two in finance and eleven stats ten and five four and eight and seven so one two three four five number of students are pretty less which is not acceptable to be very honest but for ease of calculation I'm keeping the data set pretty small so I think the fifth observation fifth particular thing has already assumption has already met that there the observations are paired fourth also the data can be continuous marks can be in points it can take decimal values so I think the two assumptions are already tested uh, of course I will not be able to test the normality homoscedicity I will just check by dropping a graph and outliers too so I'm skipping one for now this is for advanced stage of statistics so let us assume that the marks are normally distributed first one I'm assuming let me check through a graph second and uh, you know, uh, sixth, right? Second, third, and sixth. Okay, let's go ahead. Let's drop a graph. So in Excel, you can do it pretty easily on a single click. I'm showing it manually right now. So on this axis of X, I'm taking marks in finance. I'm marking them two, four, six, eight, ten, and twelve. Similarly, two, four, six, eight, ten, and twelve in finance. Let's plot it. The first pair is six and nine. So four, six in finance. There is a 9 in stats somewhere here, I guess. Yes. So that is first dot of the data. Let me make it a little bigger. Fine. Let's see 2 and 11. So second and 11 right here. The third is 10 and 5. 10 marks in finance and 5 in um, statistics right here. And then I say 4 and 8. So four marks in finance and eight in statistics right here. Eight and seven. So eight marks in finance and seven in, uh, okay, that's it. So I plotted the data. Let me drop a line which best represents this particular data set. Okay, okay, so, um, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll just go through it. That's it. So I've dropped a line <clears throat> that can be, so the whole data set can be represented through a linear, uh, you know, arrangement, a linear line. So you can see that linearity is okay, it exists. 
and let's say no outlier so there is no a dot which is far away from the line the variance is not very huge so it's no outlier that means i'm not getting a dot somewhere here or here you know so no outliers are there and homoscedasticity means the dots the variance on both sides of lines must be more or less same that means if you look into this thing i could assume like one or two dots out of five are top on above the line or one two three that means if i see that only one dot is below the line one is above so equality is maintained that's what i meant by homoscedasticity so all the assumptions met roughly so let's go ahead into the calculation of the coefficient of correlation here is the solution sheet right in front of you i have a variable x i have a variable y and let's go ahead so what is my formula it is small x times small y divided by small x square times small y square summation of everything and uh, i also know that small x is x minus x bar small x if i if i write it here small x is x minus x bar i've written it here small y is y minus y bar so <clears throat> first thing is i need x bar which is mean or average of x small and small y bar is uh, mean or average of y so let's calculate mean of x and mean of y first so i know the formula for mean of x mm, that is right here x bar is summation of x divided by nx nx means number of observations in x so i know that there are five observations 1 2 3 4 5 So I know n x is five. Let's see summation of x. Let's sum all of them, and the summation of x here comes out to be how much? Six into eight, ten, eighteen, twenty-two, eight. It is thirty. So I know summation of x is thirty. So I will put it thirty. There are in total one, two, three, four, five observations. I'll put it five, and the x bar comes out to be six. so that is the average of x bar now let's see uh, the y bar how much is y bar so let's sum all the values of y here and uh, then of course number of observations in y it is 1 2 3 4 5 so five observations are there in y also now i need to find out sum of y so let's see 11 9 20 25 25, 25, 25 and 8 which makes it uh, 33 and 7 40 so i have a 40 here so let's put it here 40 divided by 5 that gives me 8 so i know my x bar is 6 y bar is 8 so that means this this you can easily write now i'm going to calculate something like x minus 6 here and y minus 8 here that will give me small x and small y Let's do it. So x x minus six. That means six minus six is zero. Two minus six is minus four. Ten minus six is four. Four minus six is negative two. Eight minus six is two. Same way y minus y bar. So I'm going to get nine minus eight is one. Then uh, two minus sorry eleven minus eight is three. Ten minus sorry five minus eight is negative three, eight minus eight is zero, and seven minus eight is negative one. Now for my numerator I need x y so I have small x and small y. Let's multiply them. Zero times one is zero. This is four minus four times three is minus twelve. Four times minus three is again minus twelve. Minus two times zero is zero. Two times minus one is minus two. So let's see what is summation of x y. I'll sum all these values. So it twenty four. It gives me minus twenty six. I also need for my denominator sum of x square times sum of y square. So x square is square of these values. Small y square is square of these values. So zero square is zero. Minus four square is sixteen. Four square is sixteen. Minus two square is four. Two square is four. Then one square is one. My three square is nine. Minus three square is nine. Zero minus one square is one. So uh, I'll sum them up. It gives me forty. And it, the total of this gives me twenty. That's it. I'm ready with everything. I'm ready with my numerator. I'm ready with my denominators. Let's plug the values in. So it is going to go negative twenty-six in the numerator. Sum of x y right here. 
square root sum of x square which is 40 right here times sum of y square which is 20 right here use a calculator put the values in and you're going to get negative 0 0.92 since the correlation lies between Carl Pearson's coefficient of correlation lies between minus 1 and plus 1 that means it cannot exceed plus 1 it cannot go below negative 1 and this shows it is a negatively very strong correlation because 0.92 is pretty close to minus 1 and negative means both are moving in opposite direction that means for this data set if somebody is doing good in finance that means it is going to do poor in stats I don't know probably I have selected uh, or, or I should say that I have marked the X and Y poorly but uh, if you mark X and Y perhaps in uh, you know history you can take X in the marks in history and Y marks in maths then it may make more sense thank you very much post your comments and uh, please do not forget to share and subscribe thank you